Mr. President. Senator from Maryland. Uh, Mr. President, I want to start by thanking uh, the senior senator from Delaware uh, for his long-time persistence in making sure that this Congress ultimately does the right thing and makes the District of Columbia the 51st state. I want to thank Congresswoman Eleanor Holmes Norton for representing the people of the District of Columbia so ably. She deserves a vote in the House of Representatives, just like every other member of the House of Representatives from the 50 states. And the District of Columbia deserves two senators right here in the United States Congress. And I want to thank President Biden for saying, if this Senate will just get this bill to his desk, he will sign that piece of legislation and make sure the peace of people of the District of Columbia are represented uh, as every other citizen in the 50 states is currently represented. All of us uh, come to this floor and we hear our colleagues on both sides of the aisle talking about the importance of democracy overseas. We criticize China rightly when it begins to snuff out the right to vote in Hong Kong. We criticize the authoritarian rulers in Belarus when they clamp down on freedom. We look around the world and we try our best to establish a standard for standing up for the principle of democracy. We're not only not always consistent, we're not always constant in that message, but we make an effort to do that. We need to look in the mirror and make that same effort right here at home. I hear so many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle talking about the importance of democracy around the world, but when it comes to granting the people of the District of Columbia the full rights of a democracy, the right to two votes in the Senate and a vote to the House, they're not there. And the people of the District of Columbia are fed up and tired of the hypocrisy. They're even more fed up about what my friend and colleague, the Senator from Virginia, was just talking about. The fact that they contribute in every way to our country, but are denied the right to have voting representation in the House and the Senate. As the Senator from Virginia said, and others have said, a founding principle of our revolution was the idea that nobody should be subject to taxation without representation. And Senator Virginia talked about Patrick Henry, and there are others that we know established that principle. And yet here in the nation's capital, the people of the District of Columbia pay higher taxes than those in 22 other states, and yet they don't have a vote in the House or two senators to represent them. They've also had people who served in every one of our wars, who split, spilt blood for this country, and yet while they help to protect our democracy from threats abroad, they don't have the right here in our democracy to cast those votes for voting representatives in the House and the Senate. Mr. President, this is not a partisan issue. We know it shouldn't be. We know that if every member put on a blindfold and just said the people of the District of Columbia deserve a vote without thinking of the political outcome, the people of the District of Columbia would have a state. As others have pointed out, uh, two states have smaller populations but they have two senators who can cast votes here in this chamber. The state of Wyoming and the state of Vermont, both smaller population-wise than the District of Columbia, but they have those rights and representatives here in the United States Senate. So we should move forward uh, with the state of Washington, Douglas Commonwealth, and to hear our Republicans' colleagues oppose this idea, since they don't want to take it on on the principle of democracy, we've heard some absurd reasons given for why the District of Columbia should not be a state. Here are a few. And if anybody doubts that Republican members in the House or Senate have said these things, I'll be happy to show it to you. We've heard from members of Congress that people of District of Columbia don't deserve statehood because it doesn't have a landfill. 
We've heard that the District of Columbia shouldn't be given statehood because it needs more car dealerships. First they said, well, it can't be a state because it has no car dealerships, but now it doesn't have enough of them. Others have said, well, because it lacks a mining industry. How could it possibly be a state? And then most recently, we heard that it would be unfair, unfair to give the people of District of Columbia a state here because their representatives would have an unfair advantage. They'd have special superpowers because they would be so close to this capital that they'd somehow be able to get an unfair leg up on everybody else here in the United States Senate. These are reasons that Republican House members and senators have, have given for denying the people of District of Columbia the right to statehood. We all know what they are. It's just a wall of excuses trying to obfuscate and prevent us from getting to the main issue. If you don't want to talk about the principle of democracy, change the subject. The real concern, as we know, is that the people of District of Columbia will cast votes for representatives in the House and Senate that they think best reflect their interests, and they believe that in the current situation, those seats will go to Democratic members in the Senate and the House. And as my colleagues have said, the District of Columbia is comprised of a majority of people of color. And the senator from Virginia talked about the history of that having been an impediment to the admission of some other states in the past before the country did the right thing. Mr. President, we have the power to do the right thing. I have here a letter from 39 constitutional scholars affirming our authority to make the District of Columbia the 51st state. We should do it. Frederick Douglass once noted that the District of Columbia was, quote, one spot where there is no government for the people, of the people, and by the people. His words are a call from history, a call that demands that we reflect on this act of selective disenfranchisement that has been happening for generations and which is still happening to this day, right outside of this building, right now. Let us change that today. Let us change that and make this the 51st state and name it in honor of Frederick Douglass. I yield the floor.